Okay, today we're gonna put some rock sliders on this truck and make it a little bit more resilient when out on the trail. We had, I would say, a slight incident with the ones that came from the factory. The Mopar rock sliders that came on this truck were really just more of a decorative step. And with the weight of this truck, I mean, essentially for those of you that don't know what this is, it's a power wagon. It's a 2020 power wagon I've had about a year and we get it out on the trails quite a bit out in Utah and here in California. And it's so long with this long of a chassis, you're gonna end up getting high center quite often uh, without even really trying hard. So without some sort of protection, you're probably gonna really tear up these, these uh, rocker panels here. So by putting the regular rock sliders on there, they did save the paint and the body, but they did not fare themselves very well. In fact, we bent both of them up about 45 degrees which made it really hard to get in and out of the truck without sort of twisting your ankle. So we're gonna put on these new rock sliders, rock sliders from White Knuckle Off-Road. Uh, they were custom ordered, take, a, take some quite a while to build them. I think it was several weeks. Finally got them, so super excited to um, finally be able to go out without being naked out on the trail. We haven't even really taken it out over any rocks because of that vulnerability. So if you were if you've got a power wagon or any Dodge truck for that matter, and you take it off road, this might be a good one uh, to watch because this, these rock rails are bolted directly to the frame. They're not like the factory ones that are just really screwed into some sheet metal. I mean, they were fairly stable. They were on there, but uh, nothing that's gonna withstand what these new ones will. These new ones will take the entire weight of the truck, no problem. You can slide back and forth over the biggest rocks out there. This truck does come with a lot of armor on it already underneath, and unfortunately, it doesn't match what came on the rocker panels. So today we're gonna fix that. Look at that, they gave us a free packing blanket, how nice. Some beefing with beef right there. Time to get under it already. 
No, there we go. You can see that we just have these little clips. So we need some clips, pullers, but we don't have any, so. Now we do have some hardware. We, that's a screw, we don't wanna rip that out. These don't really matter because they're not going back in. That's a kind of a cheap piece of shit anyway. It's either going to be 8 or 10. It's 8. Well, we can't hear it, but there is something going on down the street, and there's nothing but BMWs, Ferraris, Porsches. And that sounds pretty good to me. I always like the sound of a well-tuned machine. So for those of you that don't know anything about the power wagon, it is basically a Jeep Rubicon adapted to a heavy duty truck body. And when I say heavy duty, man, I mean, they built the shit out of this thing, man. It is, it is impressive. And we've had it off road several times and it does not disappoint. Being that I had a Rubicon before I was not expecting very much because a Rubicon is you know, beyond impressive in its off-road capability. But this truck blew me away. So kudos to Dodge for the power wagon. Love this thing. But with all this armor under here, you know, you just, you really fell short on the rocker panels. Good thing for independent metal artisans like White Knuckle. Here's the fastener from the original mounting. The original step sides, we'll call them that because they weren't really rock sliders. They were into this basically reinforced, but just bent sheet metal. This piece, this front mount piece here is subject to rub against the cab right up here. So you wanna make sure it's not touching there. You get a creaking sound while you're driving. You have to loosen the bolts and space it out a little bit. So we'll watch out for that. This little thing is, goes to the inside of the cab. It's like a little cooler that you put, you know, a couple of cans of soda or whatever and some ice in that thing. That can be easily removed, but we're gonna try and do this without removing it. So you can see that I've gotta line these posts up here outside of this frame. See how those are just free floating as I've got them sitting here. We're gonna lift them up with a jack stand and then we're gonna also support this area right over here with a jack stand so it has a tendency to be back heavy. So we're gonna have two on the main frame out here and one to keep it from rolling over right here. The whole thing is coming forward. This is where it gets tricky, you know, is like trying to move it. It's so fucking heavy. Um, if you can kind of support the back end and just be mindful, we don't want it to fall off the jack stands. So what are we doing? We're going to shift it forward a little bit. Just slide it a little bit. I'm hitting something. Maybe that, that one right there. Is it wedged on anything or no? 
Oh, it is. It's hitting that back one right there. Oh. Okay, so that looks like that's got to go on, on the front side of that plate then. Got it. That's kind of tricky. Why don't we yeah, let me come you. down and then we'll go forward. Would you have to move this jack stand? Yeah, it's kind of, it's pretty well on this one. Hold on. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yep, yep. I think I'm clear, but take a look. Tell me when to come up. Yeah, it's clear. Okay. Good. All right, I think I can get it from there. This plate is in. I had to pry this with a screwdriver here. And this is the widest plate. This is the back of the, the front plate. And I did get one screw from this side over here through into this side over here but this box whatever it is this I don't know if it's a relay box or what this is but it is just right in the middle so I have to go above it to get the screw in it's possible but I can tell you all the way back there's a lot of obstacles I thought the front was gonna be the easiest but this is actually gonna be the worst one and there's a weld right here too so it's it's sitting on that weld and pushes it out a little bit it's not completely flush uh, hopefully the bolts are long enough. I believe they are. All right, so here's the front one. This piece right here does snap off. You can see the little hook there. I can snap that back on right now. Um, I did, because of this weld right here, the plate, you know, these bolts are definitely long enough, but just barely with that weld, because that adds probably almost a quarter inch to the, the distance between the plate and the, the main frame here and up above here are the other two bolts the front one's the only one that has the double wide with four bolts on it the rest are just single bolts and the, so this front's anchored in so it's not going anywhere and now i'm going to go to the back and work my way forward this was a lot more challenging than i thought but you know you're doing a lot by feel because uh, you can't really see what's on the other side of this and I don't want to completely remove this because I'm not exactly sure. It looks like it's got all kinds of brake lines going through it. So we're just going to snap it back on and I can get around it with the wrench. And then this loom up here does lay right on top of your bolt. So you have to keep pushing it up out of the way. I don't know if you can see that over there. That wire loom. Right there. Wrapped up like a mummy. That thing just... It's just a pain in the ass. You just have to keep pushing it up out of the way to get your bolts in. And then we're going to leave these loose until we get ready to um, lock the whole thing down because we may need to slide it around a little bit to position it. But you can see the clearances are pretty tight. It's not going more than an inch forward. Or, and there's also a plate in the back. So these guys definitely built this specifically for every detail of this truck. I mean, it's impressive. It fits perfectly, but just barely. Okay, so this is in there. This is the rear piece. And you can see we're up against this gas tank armor here and the gas tank itself. I mean, we just barely clear that with the bolt, the gas tank bolt. Uh, the bolt barely clears the gas tank. So, very snug fit. Got some brake lines up here on the top. You're reaching around to get the top nut on. Not exactly sure how I'm going to get a wrench in there, but we will figure that out later. And there are some brake lines, so when you're sliding this rear plate in, you kind of have to feel your way around there and get it up underneath those brake lines. You have to wedge it in because they're tied up against the chassis. So it's a lot of just sort of feeling your way through. Everything's doable. It's kind of snug, but you can move it. Uh, you know, but if you're not, I've been turning wrenches my whole life. Uh, I'm not saying I'm by any stretch a master mechanic, far from it, but I've been under vehicles feeling my way around in greasy parts for a lot of years. And, uh, if you, if you're not that person, you may want to have someone install this for you. Okay. On to the second one here. And this one seems to be. Pretty similar to the first one. This would be the, 
Actually, no, this is the third one. Um, let's see. We got the rear. Yeah, this is the third one. The second plate, which is my my next one right here, has a shorter bolt, I believe, on the bottom of the top. For whatever reason, it's a half inch shorter. I gotta reread the instructions, but there's a reason why we can't uh why we have one oddball bolt per side. So we're gonna do this one, and it's you know, we're still fighting against the gas tank armor here, but uh, after doing this one, I think I'm feeling pretty confident this one should go smoothly. All right, I wanted to show you this. These are the brake lines here. And you can catch a glimpse in there and see the, the screw coming through, the bolt coming through. All right, you can see these so you can see these lines here. This is what I was talking about earlier. They're a little tricky to get up behind them. You can barely see through there. So you have to slide this plate right up underneath there to get to that bolt. Definitely got to make sure you're not on top of those or you will screw up your brake lines. So I do not have the plate up there yet. I'm getting ready to slide it up. So I'll have to pull the bolt back and then slide it up underneath there, which there's room, barely washers on in the nut and then uh, just leave it hand tight for now this side's relatively easy there is the, the the loom up here the wiring loom I don't know if you can see it I had to pop another holder out of the frame and then uh, manip manipulate that out of the way I don't know if you can see it there's the loom there okay it just is all over in what you're trying to do here so you have to really kind of there it is so you can see the bolt head there the loom is again in the way had to get the flathead screwdriver up there and pop another line holder out of the frame they pop out pretty easy and that thing's just going to kind of be in your way the whole time but you, know, you can see the the way they have them popped into the frame there with those plastic holders so you just kind of got to make it happen okay so you can see i've got the plate right up underneath those lines and maybe you can barely see the tip of the screw head there now i just got to get the washers and the nut threaded on there and then we'll do the lower one here and kind of got to muscle this up a little bit with my shoulder to get it straight it's not going anywhere now because i have it on the back and front so there's no risk it's going to fall on me. You just kind of, kind of got to manipulate it a little bit to get it square out, square with the frame. All right, so I've got the nut and washers on there. And you can see how that goes right up underneath those lines. And here's the back of the fuel tank. And while we're here, look at the size of that drive shaft and that U-joint. Man, that is just crazy. It's got to be like six inches diameter. Maybe five? I don't know. It's big. Okay, I need two, two hands here. All right, so this is the third one and it is in there. You can see the top and the bottom. In the background, you can see the rear one. I just have one more right here. All right, for this one, this is the second one back. There's the front one, there's the second one. And I got the bolt in there, no problem. I mean, you know, you're, you're futzing around again with the, the loom here and some other stuff, but you know, it wasn't that hard to get the bolt in. You see the bolt head there. Okay. This loom is your best friend this whole time on the driver's side anyway, but over here couldn't be any worse possible place for the coupler for this cable. It's right where you need to get your bolt. 
and you can't really move it out of the way very much. It's pretty taut. So rather than keep fighting this thing, I think I'm just gonna take it out. That'll be a lot easier. You see there's another wiring harness around it here. So I'm sure it'll be fun getting it back in, but I think, you know, you gotta pick your battles and I think it's just easier to take this out. Yes, very much. Thank you. There's the bolt. We couldn't get any easier than that now. That was impossible getting up between there. Can you hold it on that nut right there while I go under? And... So this one is shorter. It is four and a half inches as opposed to five. It goes in opposite way from the inboard to the outboard and it's a vinyl locking nut washer <laughs> and then we have this little guy goes the opposite direction through here this is where I have to muscle this thing up with my shoulder because it's not lining up right do you want me to use my muscle? Yeah, I want you to use your muscles. Come on. Uh, okay. Oh, shit. What happened? That washer rolled all the way to the other side. Come here, roll this way. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Babe, it looks like you're getting eaten by the car. Uh, well, I, it just like it was pinched in there. I got to get the nut on before I let the weight off of it. <clears throat> I'm pushing it with my shoulder. I'm just creating a wedge. There it goes. Do you want me to hold it? <sighs> hold on. All right, done. All right, so it's it's on there now. Is that the tight? Yeah. It's much easier. So right now I'm driving around the block to try and see if what I'm hearing is this rock rail rubbing. Now I read in the instructions that you need to put a screwdriver in there when you're tightening the bolts so that there's a small gap between the frame on the number one set of bolts. And I did that 
I tightened it, I could barely get the screwdriver out. But I don't know if you can hear that, but as I rock the wheel back and forth, there's definitely a squeaking going on, which sucks. So I'm gonna try and get under there and uh, bend it a little bit, pry it, see if I can get a little bit of gap in there, probably not. Probably gonna have to loosen all the bolts again. And some of those bolts are extremely difficult to get to, so this could be hours. I might just drive it this way for a while. I might also spray some garage door lube in there and see if I can get that um, to, to quiet down a little bit and we'll circle back to it later, especially when it's a little warmer. Check this uh, Lamborghini. This is our building right here. And then it rained a lot last night and the lower part of our parking lot is Lake Huntington Beach. Day two, we're gonna do the passenger side. Seems like it's gonna be a lot easier than the driver's side was because there's a lot less to compete with under there. So let's take a look over here. Do still have this box, but I think I can get around that plenty easy. This looks like it can easily be pulled out of the way. Uh, there is an attachment here on top. We'll see. We'll see how it lines up, whether or not that needs to be undone. But on the other side, I think we're right here in front of this, so we should be good. And on the back side here, you can see that's relatively open all the way down. Yeah, so markedly easier than the first one. I don't think I have to take anything apart. But over here, I'm gonna have to go in. I wanna recheck, retighten all my bolts. And then I'll show you this little workaround I have for that bolt over there that I couldn't reach. Get it off. How did I get what off it? So in here, We have these and the three quarter size right there. I believe I can get over the back side of the frame just enough to possibly have it wedge against something to stop the nut from spinning. And it may get permanently lodged in there, which is fine. Although I'd be concerned it might fall off someday and bounce and go into someone's windshield or hit a motorcyclist. So we'll try and get it out. But you know how that is when you tighten something and it's in a hard to reach space, sometimes it gets pinched in there. But that's my workaround for that impossible to get a wrench on uh, nut on the back side of the frame. So I've been driving around with this one this week. I like it a lot. Uh, I would say it's near perfect fit and finish. That doesn't really look perfect, but I'm just not that picky, so I don't really care. And when you step on it, it is really stable. Really stable. Really nice for climbing in. Put my left foot on. Hop right in.
think because the jack is here, we'll start start in the back. Definitely want to do this when the engine's cooled down. So you're right against this muffler here. So little underside tour here. Here's the back. And it's just resting on this jack stand. There are no connectors until you get to here. So I've got the first one on here. This, this one's really easy to get to. As you can see, there's really tons of room here. And that's easy peasy. And just kind of run along the bottom here. You can see here's our next next ones. This this jack stand is, I mean, this uh, floor jack is really just holding that upright. It's resting on the jack stand up there. This just holds it up into position. I've already got the rear locked in. So once you get the rear locked in, you have a lot less chance of getting something on your face. And then we'll lock in one more of these and. Then we'll be good to go up to the front. We'll take the jack stand down and I mean the we'll take the floor jack out once I get this one in, the second one. And then we'll just wrap this up. You can see the inside here, this is the passenger side. It is wide open. It does run all along the exhaust, so again make sure your engine's cool. Exhaust is cool. And this is really really pretty straight straightforward. I might end up taking this out since I did the other side and they're now we know how to do it. It's really fast and easy to do that. And then we're really, we're really just gonna haul ass on this side. Like that little step up that's nice used to hop hopping in because of the lack of a running board or any type of step not that i mind hopping up but having a little step definitely doesn't hurt <laughs> 